And while our eyes are fixated on the parties and their primaries as they count down to the uh, 2023 general elections, a lot of you seem to forget that there are also off-cycle elections happening. Uh, first, with uh, Ondo State, with Ekiti State, and then you have Oshun State. Oshun election is for the 11th of uh, July. The um, Ekiti election is a month before, which is June. So. We have everything laid down, and the uh, candidates for the, uh, for the parties have already been determined. It's just the electorate waiting to cast their ballot. Durant Odeyemi is uh, chairman, media, and publicity senator at Deliki uh, campaign organization. He's the, the standard bearer for the People's Democratic Party. And we're looking at uh, the PDP's chances uh, for the elections in Oshun State. The last time the PDP had... Uh, itself in the hems of affairs in you know, Oshun State. It was with uh, Olagusoyo Izola, and that was um, in 2007. So there's a lot for the PDP to try to prove itself in the upcoming election, and always a pleasure to have this discussion. Thank you very much, uh, Diro Deyemi, for joining us on News Hub. If you, if you unmute your device, it appears that we cannot. So let's yeah. try this again. Excellent. And I'm sure it's Are a great now? brilliant. I'm sure it's a great day for you also too. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a good day. Excellent. All right. So um, you hope to upturn the apple cat, like they say, uh, and then get the PDP into office in Oshun State. But it's not a cakewalk, I'm sure, as you found out from the campaigns going on. But give us a, a general overview of what you think and consider your chances to be. Uh, thank you very much for that uh, question. Um, it wasn't that uh, we did not win the last election. The whole world, and Nigeria in particular, knows what went wrong. It wasn't that the people of Oshun State did not vote for Jackson, Nuruddin, Ademola, Adeleke. They did, overwhelmingly. But you know, Nigerian uh, election and, you know, the manipulation tendencies, that was why we lost that election and we still hold on to that. But this time around, what we have planned to do is to ensure that we block all loopholes. And wherever they want to rig us out of this election, we will make sure that that is not allowed this time around. And looking at the election generally, the people of Osho State are ready to vote for us en masse, simply because they know the Adeleke that we are presenting is credible, is capable, and he's already serving them well. He has served them as a senator, and he has served them in his individual capacity. And they know the family to be industrious. They know the family to be a political family where the interest of an average of Oshun State indigenous matters to them. So because of this, the people believe in his candidature, and the PDP as a political party is campaigning well. We are reaching out to the people, and as God will we, we do it. You see, when group of robbers decide to steal something, and they do, you know during the distribution time, they are about to be crisis. That is one trying to take more than the other. That is exactly what is happening within the camp of our opponent now. They are in disarray. They are they are disorganized. We are tapping on that. But that is not our own entire system. Our system is to take the campaign to each polling booth, to take the campaign to all houses, preach love, preach peace, sell our manifesto to the people, so as to ensure that in July 16, PDP emerged victorious, and Senator Daxton Nuruddin Ademola Adeleke is sworn in as the governor of the state. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the program once again, Mr. Odeyemi. Uh, the, uh, the court verdict that came last week to settle the uh, tussle, some will call it tussle, some will say umpire, some will say the controversy around who should really fly the flag of uh, PDP come uh, July 16 governorship election was laid to rest when your candidate, uh, Senator um, Ademola Adeleke, was given the nod to go ahead to really uh, you know, be the governorship candidate of your uh, party. Can you be a, uh, take, bring us up to speed as to how 
well, you are reaching out, because some people believe that if you have to win the state, uh, that uh, the, the winner of the primary, primary on the other side, and person of Mr. Abayemi, also has some followership that you may need to come together as one family to form a common front against opposition. What is your camp doing in ensuring that you reach out to other aggrieved party members, so to speak, some other camps who are not favored uh, in that uh, judgment, since you all belong to one family? Thank you very much. Uh, that is the essence of politics. And we are aware of the fact that uh, election is a game of number. The more, the merrier. And uh, as a political party, we are aware of the, far, of the importance of coming together. Um, yes, the party at the national level has set up a reconciliation committee. And the committee are working well within the two camps. And apart from that, individually and among ourselves, we are talking to ourselves because it is always easy to fight and settle misunderstandings in government house than outside it. So we all know we have been out of government for several years. And the ultimate aim and ambition of every individual in PDP is to get to that office again. So because of that, we believe in reconciliation. We don't believe anybody should leave the party, except if some people have made up their mind to work as opposition within the party. If not, we will still come down, come down to a round table and discuss whatever is the issue, give and take, understand ourselves better, resolve issues, so that we can go into that direction with one voice. We are doing that. And uh, we believe that if nobody is a saboteur, we believe if you are not an agent of PDP, you will subject yourself to this reconciliation arrangement that is ongoing. But having said that, we cannot underrate APC as setting some people within us and among us to work for them. So, but at a point, this will be determined. And once we determine that, appropriate action will be taken. This is election. This is strategy. We want everybody on board, but that is not to say that we are not really now the fact that if you realize that you are an agent of, uh, of APC, then we will not welcome you and will not allow you to destabilize our strategy and the work we are doing. Mm. So, so from, from what you say, it appears that even within the, the APC also to, uh, sorry, within the PDP rather, you, you're not 100% sure you have everybody uh, working together with you because of the litigation that has happened. Uh, you think there's enough time for you to mend fences and um, have a common front ahead of the elections? I've just said it. We are trying to make fences. We are trying to reconcile with everybody. We are even trying to see, you know, what we can give and what we can take among ourselves. But I'm wrong. I'm not ruling out the fact that APC may have that strategy of planting some people amongst us so that they will continue to destabilize and disturb us. Because after the court judgment, what we expect everybody to do is to subject themselves to the reconciliation committee set up by the party at the top. These are people who are unbiased. These are people who only subject themselves to the history of art and what part A is saying and what B is saying, and they look at it dispassionately. So if that is the situation, we believe a good party person who is interested in the party winning an election, you know, we agree and subject himself or herself to the decision, the final decision of the reconciliation committee. But wherever we discuss or whenever we realize that you are not towing the line of peace, that you want to remain adamant in destabilizing us or in causing crisis or in taking the party to court, then we'll show you the way out. Because even out of 12 disciples of Jesus Christ, there are one Judas is sacred. And if you have 1,000 people in the political party, Expect some people, uh, expect some people to be playing some roles that will be detrimental to your progress. And the Bible says, even if your hand will make you sin, cut it off. All right, um, Mr. Edio, the July 16 election will be very interesting. How many people can't even wait for the full-fledged com uh, campaign to start? 
you know, so we can see what is what the parties will bring to the table, uh, knowing fully well that the electorate are supposed to be king in this situation. Uh, you, you said it a while ago that uh, your candidate, uh, Senator Adeliki, was actually reached out in 2018. Some people would argue that, according to the Supreme Court, that didn't happen. And so it would mean that the governor then now uh, was validly elected. That's number one. Number two, if you thought that happened then, what is your candidate doing towards the next election to ensure that he is not rigged out and that the voice of the people, voices, so to speak, will be heard if they decide to vote for him? Yes, Izzy, there are people's courts and there are judicial judgments. In the people's court and in the mind of everybody, not only in Osho State, even in the entire country, they know that PDP won that election. It was the abracadabra of rerun election, which was fabricated and, you know, done to chase our electorate away at the polling booth that made us to lose that election eventually and through the Supreme Court. I'm not going to argue about that any further. But what I pointed out to you is that at the first ballot, we had the majority vote. And the people of Oshun State realized that it is not a delegate that was cheated. It is, the, it is then the people of Osho State that first cheated in this matter. And they are now more than determined that this time around, the vote will be overwhelming for anybody to obtain. And at our own level, what we are doing is to counter whatever plan they are bringing on board to rig us out. Recently, they put up an advert that they were trying to recruit uh, oh yes men and we have asked the people of Osho state why are you recruiting now because we believe you want to use that system to recruit thugs that we checkmate us or that we intimidate us out of uh, you know the polling booth and we have asked the question and we have, we have told the uh, security agencies to please look out for people who will be applying for this kind of job at this time is a government that was not ready to employ anybody, even though it was part of their manifesto that they were going to give employment to the youths. But nothing was done. But now that we are going into an election, what they now do is to put up an advert that they are going to recruit oh yes people without a definite uh, schedule of their job. That's one. They have gone to town to say they are establishing universities in a town that has been there for years, that has College of Education in Asia precisely. And at the twin light of their exit from government, they now remember that they have to promise the people, uh, you know, uh, upgrading that College of Education to university. We have countered that. And recently, they have been, you know, they believe in propaganda. So we, at our own level, and try to checkmate them and let the people realize that this is a political party that has deceived them for over three years and they should, there is no reason they should rely and believe in them. But at our own level, even as individual, the Adeleke family has done more than what the government is doing for the people of Osho State. We knew what they did during COVID-19. We knew what they are doing at each festival period. And we knew the scholarship they are giving to individuals. We know the, the, the people they have helped, they have helped in paying the hospital bills and even taken abroad for treatment. We know a lot of things they have done for society, even when they are not in government. And this is why the people believe more in them and are ready to put them into office. So we are checkmating them. We will continue to allow the security agencies of whatever manipulation they are planning to do. And we will not rest on our hours. And we will continue to campaign to the people of Osho State that Senator Nuruddin Ademola Jackson is the best candidate. And they should vote PDP as the party. But, um, as, as something also, Mr. Deremi, um, you look at the, uh, at the figures. Now that you talk about manifest and what the, what the issues are. I, I did stay in Oshun State uh, in Edes several years ago, and many of the problems that were faced by people who live in Oshun ha haven't changed uh, over the years. The uh, problem with the roads, electricity, uh, employment opportunities, these are the basic issues oftentimes you'll find uh, people face. How does your candidate 
hope to deal with first and foremost, let's look at um, the roads, the, the, the roads in the state. I, I know there's been some improvement uh, with um, when you had um, uh, the former governor of Arabia Shola, but you still have a lot of problems in terms of connecting the, the rural roads, uh, access roads to the main uh, carriageway. How, how does he hope to deal with this when you, look also, when you think also about the monies that come into uh, Oshun State from the, from the central post, which uh, is one of the least you can find in the country? Yeah, you, one thing I want to bring your mind to and what I want you to investigate is the fact that a delicate family is an entrepreneur and employer of labor. They have friends and they have international connections. And they are aware of the fact that Osho State is a civil service state. And in order to increase the economy, in order to, to, you know, to create employment, what they have to look into is, is you know, generating employment for the youth. And as industrialists, and as an employer of labor that has over thousands of people in their, on their payroll, they are ready to revolutionize or show state in terms of industrialization. And once you have that, of course, the IGR will be increased. And as business conscious and business minded individuals, people who have worked for their money to be where they are today, they know the importance of, you know, in putting in or increasing the infrastructure status of the state. Go and look at that Adelike University as a sample. It's a mini environment that is a mini community on itself. All the roads are tied through direct labor. And not only that, they have the, uh, the knowledge and they are well without to assist individually and ensuring that many roads in Osho State are tied. Because they have the experience. There are many engineers in their, on their payroll and in their employment. So it's part of our key and strategic area that we are selling to the people of Osho State. Of course, we know the importance of uh, uh, interlocal uh, inter government uh, road links. We know the importance because we are focusing on agriculture too. If you don't have good roads to transport all these agricultural products, to the city, what will be the essence? So we have the magic one to do all this. And uh, because, you know, we are talking publicly now, when it is time to tell the people of Oshun State how we are going to do it, so as not to allow APC to steal what we have for grant, we will present it in a manner that will be understandable to the people of Oshun State and assure them that we are the best. OK. Um... Let me, let me take you down the memory lane. 2017, when um, Senator Ademola had to take the place of his uh, late elder brother, also former governor of Washington State, Isiaka. And I remember vividly an interview where the Senate president at that time, Dr. Bukola Saraki, said it was emotional swearing uh, Senator Ademola in, in place of uh, his brother representing Ocean Western Interior District. Now, uh, the journey to Bolaige House is something that many people are looking forward to see what would happen if the people of Osho now uh, decide to vote for Senator Adelike to become their governor. So what are those unique things? You've talked about uh, a lot of things today that you feel that uh, your candidate can do for the youth of the Oshun state because they really are looking forward to a lot of things to happen to them from now henceforth. So what are your plans for the youth, the plans of a candidate for the youth of Washington State? I want to assure you that, uh, you know, very, very soon, we appear on your station to tell you personally all the manifesto and the plan he has for the people of Washington State. But having said that, as the chairman of the media committee, I can assure you that he doesn't even see himself as an elderly person. At 62, he still regards himself as a, as a youth. And part of his plan, and you know his family, they are into entertainment. When you're talking of Davido, you're talking of B-Rage, they are all youths. 
and, and in their own personal contribution to their state as youth, as somebody who wants to help their dad and their uncle, they are planning a lot to revolutionize or should say, in terms of entertainment. Entertainment is big money. The way people take it in Nigeria is very funny. We go to concert to watch what goes on, paying heavily, lodging in hotels, you know, and uh, you know, increasing the economy of uh, of that place at any particular time. I have one of my children who came from abroad in December, and he decided to stay put in Lagos because of what this concert. I know how much went with it. If such things are coming to Oshun State, we know how much we are going to Ghana, even though people are now saying that because he dances and because uh, he's a happy-go-lucky guy, they are, they, they, are not, they are not looking beyond the ability and what that can bring or what that can generate for Oshun State. But they will realize it that as far as PDP is concerned, we have the best regard for the youth. And if you look at what happened recently, especially the extra uh, uh, protest, you will know that the use of Oshun State and in Nigeria in particular are not to be toyed with. So we will engage them in governance. We will engage them in entertainment. We will engage them in the area of tourism and ensure that they form part of government. All right. So we are not done with that. It's a key area that we even have in our manifesto. We employ a lot of youth. We know they have the energy. We know they are ready to work. But where is the provision for them? Is the question we are asking APC. As far as we are concerned, we have our own strategy for them. And Senator Ademola Adelike, who sees himself as one of them, we do wonder in that area. Mr. Just with us. Mr. Naomi, I'm very happy that you mentioned the fact that uh, your candidates, uh, you refer to him as a happy, you know, person, go happy person yeah. who dances. I mean, many people look forward yeah. to him to dance at parties. And so that could form an opinion in some quarters that yeah. would he be uh, able to really handle this kind of office? Because it would dance at every opportunity. Some people would say, uh, so how do you sell your candidates aside the fact uh, that he has a happy-go-lucky part to the seriousness of really governing the state? You see, the question is, how does your hobby translate to not being taken seriously? We all have our individual hobbies. And are you now telling me that even Tinubu or Arabe Shala doesn't dance? I can show you several videos where they dance. Yes, well, the way people see them and the way people see them is quite different. Dancing does That's not take saying, away your senses or your ability. Yes. What I'm trying to say is that the way Senator Adeleke dances, his own is very special. Is he, he, he has his dance steps that you can't forget. Other people you're trying to refer to, occasionally, yes, but you can almost predict that when you have Senator Adeleke where you are, you're going to see some dance steps. So how do you reconcile that? That is the uniqueness of Senator Adeleke. If he doesn't dance the way he, 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 he has been doing it, you will not talk about it now. People will not notice him. They nickname him dancing senator. Of course, you must have an appellation. You must have something that is unique that people will look up to. There are instances when we go for campaign and he will want to reel out his manifesto and you know give them hope and assurance. And people will say, no, we know you already. We know what you have been doing for us in Oshun State. We know your family. We trust you. We know your late brother. We know everything. Just dance for us and go. How do you know? Our people will start before you even realize it. They will they themselves will even start with it. So it's a unique selling point that makes him known in Nigeria. So the way he dances is unique to him. And uh, it doesn't translate or it doesn't mean that he's not having that capability to rule the state. If dancing is his hobby. Everybody has their own way of enjoying themselves and, you know, just play any music. And then like we dance. And he's going to dance to Abiri, the government house, very soon, by the special grace of God. 
All right. Uh, well, we, we, it's, it's an intriguing conversation we're having with you, uh, Mr. Demi. But we're going to go on a quick break. Can we come back? We'll continue with our look on the Oshun, look at the Oshun governorship election, which comes up in July. Uh, please stay with us on News Hub. You can now stream Silverbird News 24 live on mobile app. All you need to do is to download Silverbird News 24 app from Google Play Store on your Android devices and App Store or on your Apple devices. Tap the live button at the bottom bar to watch us live 24-7. You can enjoy all our news programs including PJ News and Program. Silverbird News 24. The news never stops. All right, welcome back. And uh, we're still discussing the Oshun governorship election, which is billed for the uh, 16th of July. Uh, so we're counting down. We're having a big conversation here this morning with Diron Odeyemi, who is the chairman, media and publicity, Senator Adeleke uh, campaign organization. Senator Adeleke is the flag bearer for the People's Democratic Party in the election. And we're looking at the chances of uh, the PDP going against the incumbent. And, just wonder what those chances are. And um, Mr. Demi here, Diro Demi rather, has been giving us some insight into what is happening. Uh, I was reading a couple of days ago, uh, Mr. Demi, this um, INEC uh, memo, which was looking at um, what was going on with the elections, asking the parties and the candidates to, uh, to shun violence, to make sure that things go according to the plan, make sure you stick to the manifesto. But this interesting part about uh, uh, vote buying came up and um, a lot has been, been talked about vote buying and how it has become a snare to our politics in this country. Um, everyone feels anyone can be bought as long as uh, they make an offer. You can have an entire electorate bought if you can and if you have the resources to do so. And so the blame has moved from the two main parties, the APC and the PDP, in this, um, in this culture of vote buying. What are your thoughts? Um, there, are, there are accusations against your candidate, against the incumbent also, too, in how they are throwing money and trying to buy the electorate. As far as we are concerned in PDP, we don't believe in vote buying. We believe in convincing the people and campaigning to the people to vote for us. And as a matter of fact, if you deceive the people to get into office, you are not likely to get it right in governance. If you give them money during election, obviously you are not going to give them money when you get to office. So we, as a political party, we don't believe in that and we are not going to do that. That is why we have subjected our campaign to polling booth and house to house campaign so that we can convince people to vote for us rather than bind their conscience. I think it is a dark spot on our democracy and it's very unfortunate that it has become a trend. But since we are having this election, our election in Nigeria is second after AKT, I should say we lay a very good principle. In, in ensuring that we eradicate vote buying and instead appeal to people's conscience to vote for a candidate and a political party. Okay. And uh, whatever money we are spending right now is on the campaign. And when I say campaign, of course, we have to 
advertise on radio and TV. And of course, we have to print posters. We have to provide money for logistics moving from here to, you know, from one place to the other. These are money we are, we are spending right now. We don't budget money to buy votes. Okay, we so are clean to go into an elite selection free and fair. All right, Mr. Odey, I mean, then how do you now reconcile your statement uh, vis -a -vis with what your uh, candidate said a couple of days ago? Uh, he was ready to, you know, fight whoever it is, dollar to dollar, pound to pound, euro to euro, naira to naira, money for money in this coming election. You see, in campaigns, when people bring out issues, you know, that make them to, you know, to be afraid of following you. When people raise issues that they think could hamper your success at the, at the poll, then you are bound to give them that word of assurance. And this is that we will not allow APC to rig us out. Volatinobu has promised to come to the state with dollars and pounds. To ensure that his cousin, no, you tell him, wins that election. He has said it severally, and we have the video evidence that he is going to bring several billion van of money to win the election in Oshun State. He said it in 2017 or 2018 while addressing one of the traditional rulers in Oshun State that, yes, if it is money, he has it to ensure that APC wins the election. And if one of our members are now asking our candidates, what are your preparation or what are you doing to ensure that you are not rigged out or people did not buy votes or did you did not outwit you financially? And he's now telling them, yes, whatever strategy APC wants to adopt, we are adopting with them. If they bring fire, we will, we will bring fire to them too. We are not, so, you know, we are not uh, children of Mary that somebody will slap on the right cheek and we expect us to turn the left to him. This is election. You just have to embolden the people, you just have to assure them and let them know that you are fully prepared. And that was exactly what they said it all. And they like did in that video. And look at it. In propaganda, this is how to note a propaganda. You are all journalists. How do you now take out other contests and just release less than a minute video where it said, yes, if it is pounds, I have it. If it is dollar, I have it. If it is yen, I have it. And of course he has it and he has to say it just to assure the electorate and the people who are following him. It doesn't translate to the fact that, and he didn't say it, that I'm going to buy votes. He didn't say it that my dollar, I'm going to use it you know, to destabilize, to destabilize social state. What he has said is, if they come up with whatever strategy, we will match there and they match victorious on like what they did the last time. All right. Uh, thanks for clarifying on that because many people would say that if your candidate had accused the uh, ruling party in the state of rigging out and spending money to do so, you also mentioned. Uh, the name of the leader of the APC was also a presidential aspirant, as we speak, of boasting and saying they meant to spend everything to ensure that they won the state. Uh, some would have yeah. mistaken that, that what you're also saying is that you engage in the accusations that you have put across to the, opposi op the, the opposition party, which is now the ruling party of the state. So it's very good that you come out to clarify on that because I want to imagine the INEX eyes and ears to the ground, eyes on the ball, mm -hmm. to ensure that each party really keeps to the dictates of what should be spent and how it should be spent in the build-up towards the Ocean election. So if you have one statement, one thing to say out to the Ocean people this morning, on your expectations come July 16, what would be your words? One, make sure you are not used as instrument of destabilization in Oshun State. Don't allow anybody who have their family abroad or who are keeping their family at home to use you as thoughts. Ensure you use your, you know, you vote according to your conscience and ensure that you vote for PDP and the candidate in person of Janice, Senator Jackson Nurudi Adimola Adeleke. If we have free and fair elections, we are sure of winning. 
we will not allow anybody to manipulate us out of this election. I will not allow this party to rig us out. All other things, we are ready for them. So I'm enjoying and I'm appealing to the people of Washington State. When it is time to smear them in, they are going into the stadium or wherever with the members of their family. But during the election, they will use you as thugs and abandon you later. You are going to use the leader. If anybody is asking you to come and lead a war, to come and lead a uh, rigging for them, tell them to use their son to be in the forefront and let's see how that is going to happen. So the, the people of Washington State vote PDP, vote Senator Jackson Nuludin, Adimola Adeleke as your governor. Um, interesting. Uh, but we, we, as we bring the discussion to a close, and I can imagine um, people watching and thinking about uh, just how um, your candidate together with the incumbent and the other parties, what sort of chances they stand in. You sound very optimistic that the chances are very bright. What, what would you say? It's a problem affecting the entire country, um, the insecurity. Um, it's not just the, I was just discussing with a colleague, not just the northern part of the country, all across the country, the, the southeast, the southwest, just in different dimensions. But uh, a debt is the debt at the end of the day. I mean, anyone who dies as a result of insecurity or violence is mourned all across the entire country. And Oshun State is not insulated from this problem also, too. Uh, youth restiveness is massive. And uh, just before I let you go, I wanted to uh, get your thoughts on what sort of plans your candidate has in um, dealing with rising insecurity, uh, not just in Oshun State, but, but in the sub-Western region also, too, where cases are on the increase. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, Amotekun, which is uh, which was introduced by a PDP governor in person of uh, Governor Shiji Makinde. He has a brighter idea about you know securing the southwest, and that was what brought out the issue of Amotekun. But the way Amana Amotekun is being treated in Osho State is not the right way we will, we will do that. We will recruit more and able people. We will make sure that you know they have the wherewithal to work with. And we are not going to use them as talks because we believe with security or without any security, without with the state not secure, then you cannot bring in investors. And if you don't have investors, there is no way you can increase internally generated revenue. There is no way you can increase the economy of the state. So as a party, when you are talking of security, we know how to go about it and we go through it the right way. This present government told us they bought a uh, helicopter for the purpose of surveillance. But this is an helicopter that never worked for a day. But we ask them that they keep it. It's part of the propaganda. It's part of their way, ways of doing things because they don't know how to do it. We are going to teach them where we get there. Apart from requesting for this helicopter, if it is useful for surveillance, we will use it for that purpose for them. And we are going to recruit more into the Amoteco just to ensure that we bring peace and we protect property and life of the people of Washington State. Because that is the first requirement of any responsible government. You should be able to protect the life and property of the citizens. All right. We want to thank you so much, Dino Deyemi, Chairman, Media and Publicity, Senator Adeliki Campaign Organization. Thank you for your time and thoughts and the things you've said this morning. I want to imagine you've reached out to your target audience. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I assure you I will always be available when next time you call me. Uh, th that's heartwarming. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful week ahead. Uh, you too. All right. So that's the uh, talk talk on the show today. Yeah. Uh, however, it was such a very interesting um, interview. We thank you for all the feedbacks. Very soon we'll get them across to you. Yeah. Record time to let people know what you feel, uh, you know, per time on the program. Absolutely. I think that we can now go on that break and then we come back to the next uh, Nigerian CEO. And um, we have something for you right after this. Please stay with us. <laughs>